Whatever you choose is not always God speaking to you. There's the human element involved, there's the human will. So you have to come to the place where um, you learn to hear God. But here's the great news, you can because you're a sheep. You were born with this ability. We have a, a man in our church that um, is the general manager and um, a part owner of Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, his name is Eddie Gossage, and I've asked Eddie if I could use this example. He and another man are uh, owners of eight, Nash, eight speedways around the, the country that where you have NASCAR and things like that. So Eddie comes to our church and asked me to go to lunch with him, and so we went to lunch one day, and we're talking, and he said, um, Pastor, I, I, I need you to help me with something. And I said, uh, okay, how, how can I help you? And he said, well, you talk about that the Lord told me this and the Lord told me that. And he said, I, um, I don't know how to hear God. If you could help me, if you could teach me, if I could learn to hear God, that would be great. And so I said to him, well, um, and I'm gonna, we'll go into this in a lot of depth as I do other messages on this. But I said to him, okay, here's some things I want you to do. I want you to get alone with God. I want you to put on some worship music so that your mind can focus and get off of everything else you have to do. Focus on God. Um, I want you to pray, talk to God about what's on your heart, give him your burdens for the day. It's hard to hear God when you're burdened about something. So you have to give it to him. Prayer is uh, an exchange of the burden. If you pray and you're still burdened, then you didn't pray, you just griped. <laughs> Prayer is when you give him the burden, okay? And then I, I said to him, I want you to read somewhere in scripture and then I want you to write down what you think God is saying to you through that scripture. And I, I know that the scripture has a, a contextual meaning. I know it has a historical meaning. Um, that's, that's where we get the word exegete. It comes from a Greek word, and it means to draw out like you draw water out of the well. So there's a contextual exegesis, a historical exegesis, um, a literal exegesis. There's even a revelational exegesis. Holy Spirit, since God's word is alive, what are you saying to me? So that's what, we're, that's what I'm asking you to do. So he began to do that, and a few months later, we got back together for lunch, and he said, I want to tell you something. And I remember there was this big smile on his face. And he looked at me and said, I'm hearing God. I'm hearing God. I I'm doing what you said, and I'm writing down what I believe God is saying to me. And he said, many, many times, what I wrote down is exactly what I needed for that day. And I think a lot of us have had that experience where God's led us to a scripture, and we needed that scripture. That's God speaking to us. So, um, point number one, it's innate. And when I say it, I'm talking about the ability to hear God. So the ability to hear God is innate. In other words, we're born again with it. It's learned, so we learn how to hear God. Like we go to classes at church and we learn about hearing God or, an, or our spiritual gift. But number three is it's matured. In other words, we mature in the gift. So let me, let me go back to the illustration of children learning to speak, but they also have to mature in what they say. I mean, you think about it, a child will say, I mean, whatever comes out, just whatever comes to his mind, like, man, that guy's fat. You know, we say, no, no, we don't, we don't say that. You know, we don't tell people they're fat. Uh, or here's one, how old are you, grandma? <laughs> we, we don't ask grandma how old she is. Nobody knows how old grandma is. <laughs> We just, we just know that she knew Noah, but we don't know how old she is. So, okay. so, so we have to mature in, in it. So let me, let me tell you a, a few ways that I think, a um, few ways that people talk about hearing God that I think they're immature. Okay. One of those is uh, a message a minute. Now, this is, those are Dallas Will, Willard's words from a book he wrote called Hearing God. But I like the way he said it, a message a minute. You, you've probably been around people like this. They're always hearing God. God just told me not to put salt on my food. 
Well, you, you, you could have read Reader's Digest last month and figured <laughs> that out, you know? Uh, so God told me this, God told me that. Okay, well, think about that even. Now, when we talk about relationship, do we want God speaking to us all the time? Yes, when we talk about relationship. But when we talk about instruction or even correction, do you want God speaking to you all the time? Now, hold on. Uh, let's, again, take children. Uh, do you want to still be giving your children instruction every day when they're 40? I mean, don't you want to mature? Yeah. So, yes, God wants to communicate with us. But this, you know, you know, God, which, which, which way do I turn here? You know, every street. You know, I mean, turn your GPS on. Come on, you know. Mature in it. That, that, that's what I'm saying. So it, it, we have to mature. So this message a minute thing, I just, I don't think that's the best way. That's not the mature way to hear God. Here, here's a, another way is um, I call it the point and hope philosophy. Now you've heard this. People say, well, when I want a word from God, I just open the Bible, close my eyes, and point. Okay, well, that might work every now and then. It might. Uh, but I have a friend of mine that was, um, his business was struggling. And he'd heard someone say that. So he thought, okay, I need a word about my business. So he closed his eyes, he did his Bible, put his finger down, he looked down, it said, chapter 11. <laughs> um, the other thing, I, I was, um, um, I've, I've told you about Dallas Willard because I read his book. And one of the things he said in there was that he heard this uh, preacher one time say that God has a life verse for every person and the way you find out what your life verse is is the year you were born. Well, there's a couple of problems with that. Most people were born 19 something and when you go to the 19th chapter of every book of the Bible that has 19 chapters, some don't even have 19 chapters, the highest verse is Joshua chapter 19 verse 51. That's the highest verse. So if you were born after 1951, no life verse for you, <laughs> you know? Uh, and, but but uh, Dallas was born in um, 1935. So he thought, well, I'm gonna see what my life verse is. He just went to the first book of the Bible. Genesis 1935 says, so they got drunk and slept with him. <laughs> That's his life first. Okay, so there are more mature ways to hear God. Here's the third immature way I think of hearing God is what I call the que sera, sera philosophy. Uh, que sera, sera was written by an American. We don't know if he took it from Spanish or Italian. It actually doesn't work in either language. But uh, what his translation is, whatever will be, will be. You know, if you're my age or older, you remember Doris Day used to sing that song. Whatever will be, will be. Well, there's a problem with that, saying that that's God's voice. Because we make mistakes. And whatever you choose is not always God speaking to you. There's the human element involved. There's the human will. So you have to come to the place where um, you learn to hear God. But here's the great news. You can because you're a sheep. You were born with this ability. So let me tell you uh, something that happened to me recently. Um, it was earlier this year. Uh, I have three grown and married children, and my son, middle child, son and his wife have two boys, and they were praying about whether to try for another child for a girl. The reason they were praying is because she'd had difficult pregnancies, and they had had two miscarriages. And so they were praying, and we did a 21-day fast at the first of the year. And fast however God leads you, you know, things like that. So some people were doing vegetables only, or some did all the way to water, but some just whatever. Well, she prayed and said, God, if we're supposed to have another child, have someone give me a word who's close to us during this 21 days. So we did our fast January 10th through January 31st. So on January 31st, it was a Sunday, I'm standing there about to speak, and she's on the worship team. And I look up, her name's Bridget, and the Lord said to me, Bridget's pregnant, just like that. And that night, we were having like a family meal. You know, everyone come together at my house. And so I said, hey, I have an announcement to make. <laughs> 
And they were like, uh, really, you know, uh, so what's your announcement? And I said, uh, Bridget's pregnant. And they, everyone kind of laughed, you know, and James, my son, and Bridget, they say, ha, 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 are you serious? <laughs> I say, yeah, I'm serious, Bridget's pregnant. The Lord told me this morning, Bridget's pregnant. And I could see the look on her face because she had asked God for someone close to them to give them a word, and this was the last day of the fast. And we were actually breaking the fast at this meal that night, you know? And um, so James, my son, said, well, she's not pregnant. So he said, I can just say right now, she's not pregnant. It's impossible, she's just, she's not pregnant. And I said, well, um, she is pregnant. <laughs> and he said, well, she's not pregnant. I, he, I said, well, she is pregnant, because I, I don't care what you say, God said she's pregnant, so she's pregnant. Well, it was so strong, and they even got with me later before they left the house. They said, uh, how serious are you about this? Well, I said, I'm very serious. God said she's pregnant. And James said, well, she can't be pregnant. She's not pregnant. I said, well, she is pregnant. <laughs> and uh, so uh, because it was so strong, they decided to go to the doctor. Now, on the way home, by the way, she told James, my uh, son, she said about her prayer. She said, I was praying that if I was, we were having another child, someone give us a word who's close to us on, during the 21 days. And James said, why did you pray that? You know, <laughs> I said, you, you know my dad, and you know, so why would you do that? So they go to the doctor. Well, the doctor says, well, she's not pregnant. Uh, as a matter of fact, she, she could not get pregnant right now because her progesterone is so low, she couldn't get pregnant. It'd be medically impossible. Now, that's the reason she had the two miscarriages is because her, her progesterone was so low. And so they decided, since your dad's got this word and it's so strong, we should start. He said, if you're even thinking about it, you should start taking progesterone. So they started taking progesterone then that day. They went back about a month later to check her levels and the doctor came in and said, uh, you're pregnant. And they said, really? And uh, he said, yeah. And uh, when you came to see me last time, apparently you were pregnant then. Uh, and so they counted up, because you know you can count the days there. She was, had been, she was pregnant that time four weeks and six days. And I gave her the word four weeks and five days before. She'd been pregnant one day. Now, it's great that God spoke that word, but here's what's amazing. God spoke that word to save that baby's life. Because she started taking the medicine that's a, it's a natural hormone that your body should produce that her body was not producing. I'm just telling you, God speaks. Uh, here's what I'd like for you. I'd like for you just to close your eyes just for a moment. And if you're watching at home, just, just close your eyes for a minute. And I want you to just pray a very short but very simple prayer Say, Lord, thank you that I'm a sheep. Just tell him that in your heart. And thank you that you, as the shepherd, speak to sheep. And Lord, I pray that all of us will realize we have the ability to hear you. And we will learn and mature in hearing God. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, with the support of heroes like you, TBN is beaming the hope and grace of Jesus around the world in multiple languages. This month, for your gift of support in any amount, we're excited to offer best-selling author Dr. David Jeremiah's book, Forward. Take a moment to visit tbn.org slash go forward. God bless.